Hello, and welcome to Game Bites, a show about video game trivia that no one asked for. It's only the fourth episode, I'm already stretching the idea of this show just so I can read some comments. Today, we'll be looking at the Pokemon so messed up and never made it into the games. That's probably not the reason why I didn't make it into the games, but I'm still using that as a clickbait title. <laughs> but before I tell you what Pokemon I'm talking about, do you know what the very first Pokemon shown in the TV show was after the opening? I'll give you some time to think about it, and I'll reveal the answer at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. Pokemon Adventures was a comic that started in 1997, and according to Wikipedia, is still going to this day. But today's video is going to specifically focus on Chapter 33, The Winged Legends. This is the first and only appearance of this creature. Depending on who you ask, this is either Thufizer or Zapmokuno because it's, it's not given a name in this chapter. I'm gonna continue to call it Zapmokuno for the rest of this video because that's just a cooler name. Taking a look at this thing, it is a fusion between Articuno, Moltres, and Zapdos. And this is the first ever appearance of Pokemon Fusion. The idea of Pokemon Fusion didn't even show up in any game until Black and White 2 with the addition of Curem then Fusion was never touched again until Sword and Shield with the addition of the Fossil Fusion Pokemon. In Pokemon Adventures, this Pokemon is shown to be able to launch three full strength attacks at the same time, using Thunder, Fire Spin, and Blizzard all at once. Zapmokuno is said to be the final result of Team Rocket's testing. Previously, they had been testing using Eevees to try and combine all of the evolutions into one powerful Pokemon. It is revealed that the gym badges that Red and Blue had been collecting through their journey were part of the key to unlock Zapmokuno's power, and that the unspoiled land and its people with their strange empathy for the Pokemon will be used to fully unlock all of Zapmokuno's power. I'm pretty much just going to be describing the comic now to you, so if you want to read it, there's a link in the description below to read this chapter, and also the pages of importance will be shown on the screen as I'm talking about them. Okay, so I'll let the video get back to it. At this point in the story, Green has been knocked out and Red is fighting alone. Now, Blue has just arrived to try and help. Red needs to think of a plan to stop this thing, and then he remembers that Green wanted to use a Moonstone. Red holds up his Moonstone, and Green's Clefairy evolves into a Clefable, and jumps into the fight, unleashing a barrage of attacks by using Metronome. Zapmokuno then knocks Red, Blue, and Green out the side of the building that they are fighting in with a Sky Attack. Luckily, Ivysaur makes a web out of its vines to catch everyone. Green is now awake and ready to fight. Now, with the power of Venusaur, who just evolved, Blastoise and Charizard all combined into one attack against another sky attack from Zapmokuno. The, the full power of this attack obliterates Zapmokuno, splitting it apart and freeing Zapdos, Moltres, and Articuno. As the building crumbles and everyone is happy except the people who made the building because now it's destroyed. And also Team Rocket. Honestly? I want this battle in a Pokemon game, or even just seeing this whole thing animated would be amazing. What are your thoughts about Zapmokuno? Leave them in the comment section below and leave a like, it helps out. And while you're there, why not hit the subscribe button? Do it, or I won't tell you that Gengar and Nidorino tie for the first Pokemon seen in the show. Wait. Damn it!